With this Monday's Raw, the WWE had one more chance, one last chance to get things right. One more chance to try and ramp up any level of excitement in us as fans for this Sunday's upcoming WrestleMania 31 show. One last chance to set the table right and really try to build some momentum heading into their biggest show of the year. And the WWE, frankly, came up short. Shouldn't be that surprising, but maybe it is a little surprising because watching the show this week, you were really trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Now, don't get me wrong. It started off all fine and good. You kick off Raw with Sting, something we never thought would happen. Happen. But even when you've got Sting out there, and instead of putting the focus just on Sting, and giving him a full chance to really talk about what needs to be talked about. In a couple of minutes' time, you've cut him off because you've just got to get Stephanie McMahon on TV. And I'm sorry. As great of a job as Stephanie does as her true-to-life bitch character, it was out of place here. It didn't fit here. And I don't care about the whole thing of Sting puts his hands on Stephanie and then Triple H is mad even though she's the one that instigated it and was going to hit him first. So now they go at it. The dynamics of this would have worked so much better if it was Vince McMahon. If you're going to sit there and emphasize the thought of Sting finally being in the WWE, then the only person that really makes this work, the only person that really makes this go, and the only person that could really set this match between Sting and Triple H over the top for WrestleMania 31 this Sunday is Vince McMahon. You could have Vince McMahon come out instead of what you do with Stephanie and have Vince come out and talk about how he owns everything. And finally he brought Sting, but he did it because he wanted to use Sting as a pawn and as a puppet. And his son-in-law, by God, on Sunday was going to show him why WWE always was better and always will be better. And why Sting was nothing more than a big fish in a small pond. And the WWE was the freaking Atlantic Ocean, if you will. Whatever the fuck you wanted to go. With that said, though. Even though I wasn't a huge fan of Stephanie's involvement here. And even though I would have liked to have heard Sting talk more. What you saw here in the opening segment. Especially with the way that it ended. Is what you would expect to see out of a featured match at WrestleMania as the last kind of step towards advancing that story and really cultivating and generating interest for the feud. Something that maybe you should have captured in the main event. Maybe that's a reason why you didn't go there with the main event. I don't really know. But by the end of Sting and Triple H, you got at least a little bit excited about their match at WrestleMania 31. And I have to confess, while I'm not a huge fan of it, and I'm not going to sit there and totally buy into it and totally be excited about it. This has been a feud that has been built up for months. It's been relatively well done. And my excitement level over recent weeks has increased. And I still firmly believe in my heart of hearts that this is going to be the match that potentially steals the show at WrestleMania 31 between Sting and Triple H. And what you saw in this segment, you saw two guys that understand how to do it. Two guys that get it. Two real big, larger-than-life stars that know how to come together and make a big match happen. And if you think Sting is going out there on Sunday in his first ever match in the WWE, his first ever WrestleMania match, and setting out to stink up the joint, I got news for you. It ain't happening. But after that, the show largely went downhill to me. It really did. Like, for example, you have the one tag match with some of the participants for the IC title ladder match at WrestleMania. Bill Simmons is out there, and that's all fine and good, but why the fuck is he there? Is he going to be involved with WrestleMania in any way, shape, or form? No. Then why is he there now? And the real shameful thing about it is, is Bill Simmons was much better on commentary than any of the actual commentators get paid to do this for a living at WWE. The guy that stinks up the joint on NBA broadcast on ESPN and ABC was the shining pillar of awesome on commentary this week. That's how crappy this was. That's how bad this commentary team is. Bill Simmons, and how ironic it is, the guy who got suspended by ESPN in part for speaking his mind is now here at WWE and they're happy. Well, they got it when he's talking about JBL putting over Cena. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Vince. Uh, but then speaking of stupid things, Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler, and I know a lot of you nerds are going to sit there and think this is fucking great. Newsflash, not everything involving one of your fucking heroes or two of your fucking heroes or two of your favorites is going to be good, great, or awesome. It's not. 
How many times have I bashed shit Hogan's done over the years? And don't you dare fucking tell me I haven't. Look back at his TNA run just for one of many examples. I respect Undertaker more than anybody in the history of the business, but I pooned him largely, roundly, for signing off on ending the streak of WrestleMania 30. Not to mention, mention pretty much just pooning everything involving his American badass gimmick. The point of getting at here is just because one of your favorites are involved doesn't automatically mean it's good. And you shouldn't accept the mediocrity for one of your favorites. And in this case, Daniel Bryan versus Dolph Ziggler facing off in a match here in a non-featured segment where neither one of them have really been featured marquee participants in the build-up to this IC title ladder match at WrestleMania is mediocrity. And you should not accept it. And you should be pissed. You should be. Because this match wasn't even that good. And then by the end of it, it's fucking about Dean Ambrose and he's freaking doing dirty deeds to Dolph Ziggler. After Dolph Ziggler pins Daniel Bryan clean, mind you. That's how little Daniel Bryan fucking matters. He's losing to Dolph fucking Ziggler. And then you've got all the chaos of the set up the ladder, and then for some reason nobody actually climbs the ladder and gets the fucking belt. It's just everybody's laid out. It was just a bunch of fucking stupid. Well, what else would you expect heading into this year's show? And then for some reason the WWE decided that they wanted to crush Axel Mania, and I don't get this one. Instead of utilizing Snoop Dogg and Hulk Hogan to try and get Axel Mania over, instead of trying to utilize Snoop Dogg and Hulk Hogan to make Curtis Axel seem like it mattered, you're basically throwing Curtis Axel away for the sake of two guys who aren't involved with WrestleMania, even though they probably should be in Snoop Dogg and Hulk Hogan. If you're going to have these two guys involved, then maybe they should be involved. Oh, I don't know what your biggest show of the fucking year. You've done it before with Snoop. Snoop's a good person to have. You've done it before with Hogan. Hogan's a good person to have. Why the fuck did anybody feel that this was necessary or needed to be done with Curtis Axel? That's what I don't understand. Here, see, this is me bashing something involving my hero, my favorite of all time, Hulk Hogan. You Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler fans can fucking learn something from this. This was fucking stupid. Instead of utilizing Hulk Hogan to actually try and get somebody over, maybe having Hulk Hogan coming out and talking about how Axel Mania is going to run wild and it's cool. He remembers wrestling his dad. He remembers way back in the day his grandfather, all this other shit. It's all about Hulk Hogan revealing that Snoop has a Hulkamania shirt on and they're going to flex as Snoop shows you his three-inch garter snakes, brother. That's fucking trash. But speaking of trash... This whole shit involving the Divas title. Oh, let me guess now. Because they give them a few fucking minutes. They're giving Divas a chance. This is greedy. This is awesome. No, it's fucking stupid. And the reason it's fucking stupid is because of what you do with AJ Lee and Paige. Now, mind you, I thought the referee clearly saw AJ Lee hit Paige, which to me would suggest a disqualification. But, hey, whatever. Continuity, my ass. But you do this whole thing where instead of taking months and months to establish a friendship while building up some tension, but also re bringing them back closer before it finally explodes, you know, mega power style, if you will. You just brought AJ Lee back a couple of weeks. Her and Paige are kind of half-assed friends, and now all of a sudden she just accidentally hits her, and all now very fucking go. They ain't giving the Divas shit. They most certainly aren't giving them a chance. You can tell me they're giving the Divas a chance when they give them two featured matches at WrestleMania, both of them involving stories, one for the Divas title, and one in particular, a legitimate one-on-one -on -one Divas match or a tag match that has purpose, that has meaning, that has circumstance, that can stand on its own, and it doesn't feel like filler bullshit. And this Divas title match on Raw felt like filler bullshit. Building up to a tag match at WrestleMania, that, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't even for the Divas title. The... Lack of storyline continuity and everything else. It's the same fucking Divas division. And speaking of the same old shit, here's Rusev beating Swagger for the umpteenth dozen thousand fucking time, and then Cena coming out to make the save. Oh, now we're supposed to really believe that there's some great threat to the Cena monster come Sunday because Rusev beat him down. <laughs> Fuck that bullshit. We know where this is going. We know we're not going to like where this is going. So it is what it fucking is. It's more of the same old shit with Cena, and the reason I say that is, is you know goddamn good and well from a character continuity standpoint, he's not even going to be selling any of these injuries come WrestleMania on Sunday. It's going to be, oh my god, it's WrestleMania. Do, 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 do. I'm going to run down like a jackass with the broomstick up my rear, and then I'm going to five moves of doom my ass to the U.S. title, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And then you look at somebody like Bray Wyatt, and I feel so bad for Bray Wyatt because he's just in a lose-lose situation. He's being put in a position, credit to him, to carry a feud, and he's doing the best that he can to carry a feud. 
I still can't understand the logic of not wanting to bring Taker back at all. Um, if you're going to have him WrestleMania, I frankly can't understand the logic of bringing him back to wrestle Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania this year at all, period, anyways. But with that said, I mean, Bray Wyatt's done the best that he possibly could in what I determined to be a bad situation. And this match on Sunday, I hope, isn't going to be brutally bad. I just, I just don't know how the dynamics of this are really going to work. I guess ultimately we'll find out and see. It has been a credit to Bray Wyatt that he's done the best that he possibly can. But you can still get the sense that the people just aren't really buying into it. And I don't think that's just my bias. I don't think I'm the only one that feels that way. We got the final announcement. Uh, your other headliner for the 2015 Hall of Fame class was either Diesel or Kevin Nash. I was kind of confused as to which one. I know last year they inducted Razor Ramon, not Scott Hall. So it seemed like that's what they were doing this year. They were inducting Diesel, but then they kept referring him as Kevin Nash as well. I guess whatever the fuck. You know, at some point in time, they'll be inducting the him, Hogan, and Hall as the NWO, and I imagine that'll come somewhere around WrestleMania 33 or 34. Kevin Nash deserves his time. It's all fine and good. But then we get to the end of this show, and this is kind of why I didn't put much effort into this week's review. It's all just kind of one segment flying off the fucking uh, cuff, if you will, because if the WWE wasn't going to try, why should I? If the WWE wasn't going to put forth more effort, why should I? If the WWE doesn't care, then frankly, why should I? You finally are going to have Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns face off. Why you want to just do it, the Raw before WrestleMania, I have no fucking idea. But then we get to this segment. Brock Lesnar, square-headed ass, standing around looking big and stupid. Paul Heyman basically saying the same old shit again. And then here comes Roman Reigns. And oh, 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 oh. This will really, really drive the message home. This will really excite the people. This will really sit there and build a huge snowball of momentum for WrestleMania 31. We're going to have... A third grade style tug of war. Well, Vincent, that is just magnificent. Sport entertainment, television, if I do say so myself. Seriously. Last year, you have Daniel Bryan and his whole thing going after Triple H and Randy Orton and the authority and all of that. Years past, you would have freaking the McMahon family coming out to take on fucking Legacy on the Raw before WrestleMania 25. You would have Stone Cold Steve Austin driving out a fucking beer truck and spraying down Shane Vince and the corporate champion The Rock to now we degrade into Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns having a tug of war over the fucking title. A tug of war! Who writes this shit? Who books this shit? Let me guess. This is all the fault of Roman Reigns, right? Ding dong, you're wrong, motherfuckers. Frankly, how could anybody get over in this type of toxic wasteland of an environment? How could anybody succeed in this type of shit? And if you think this would be so much better with Daniel Bryan... As opposed to Roman Reigns, what are you fucking smoking? They got him jobbing out the fault fucking Dolph Ziggler in a second tier match of importance at WrestleMania where he's not even being featured as one of the premier prominent performers, even though he's the guy that made him in the fucking Mania show last year. A third grade style tug of war. Holy shit. I literally have had better tug of wars with Summer over her damn chew rope. Literally. I've had better tug of war trying to unhook a woman's bra. This was how they decided to cap off their go-home show to WrestleMania. This was how they finally decided to utilize Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns face-to-face -face in the same WWE ring at the same fucking time. This was the way that Vince McMahon in his circle of idiots decided, Oh my God, this is going to really sell it, baby. This is what's going to drive it home for the people. Oh, but let me guess. It'd be so much better when Triple H is in charge, right? Who do you think was a big fucking part of this, too? Ding dong, dumb dicks! Vince is a problem. He ain't the only fucking problem. And again, if you think Roman Reigns is the only fucking problem, you're a moron, too! Holy shit! An underwhelming Raw. And so fitting, because it's heading towards what is going to be a very underwhelming WrestleMania. A fucking tug of war. 
a tug of war. That's it. I'm done.